Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim and uh, welcome back to this next video and uh, in this particular video I want to focus on the uh, diagnosis of the sickle cell anemia. Uh, in the previous two videos uh, I've told you about the sickle cell anemia that what is sickle cell anemia and what kind of mutation is responsible for causing the sickle cell anemia. Uh, and in the second video I told you about the inheritance pattern of the sickle cell anemia and I'll share the link of both of the videos in the description and in this particular video I want to focus on the uh, diagnosis of the uh, sickle cell anemia. So the sickle cell anemia can be uh, diagnosed in a variety of fashions. Uh, uh, one of the uh, important method of diagnosis in the uh, unborn baby or in the fetus is the process of the amniocentesis and this process of the amniocentesis simply uh, is a prenatal diagnostic test uh, in which a small amount of the amniotic fluid is removed uh, to determine any genetic abnormality so if this is the uh, fetus uh, and it is in the uh, uh, womb of the mother so this uh, baby or this fetus is actually surrounded by the amniotic fluid and this amniotic fluid is a clear slightly yellowish liquid that is going to surround the unborn baby during the pregnancy. So in the process of the amniocentesis, what you do is that you are going to take the sample from this amniotic fluid because this amniotic fluid contains the cells of the baby. So once you have isolated the cells of the baby, you can actually check for the sickle cell gene in the uh, genome of the cells of this particular uh, fetus. And what you do is that uh, once you have isolated the uh, cells, you are going to extract the DNA from the uh, cells of the fetus and once you, have to, uh, once you have extracted the DNA, you are going to check for the sickle cell gene uh, and the process is that you are going to uh, design the primers for the beta globin gene uh, because mutations in the beta globin genes are actually responsible for the uh, sickle cell disease. So uh, what you do is you are going to amplify the beta globin gene uh, and once you have amplified that, you have to sequence that particular gene. Once you have sequenced that, you have to check whether the uh, codon at position number 6 is GAG. So if the codon at position number 6 is GAG, that means it is going to uh, code for the glutamic acid. And when that is, when at position number 6 there is glutamic acid, the red blood cells, they are going to be normal. But if this is, but if the mutation is there in the beta globin gene and this A is actually replaced by the T, changing the codon from the GAG to GTG, uh, and then now this GTG is going to code for the valine, which is actually a mutant one. And when at position number six there is valine, you are going to get these uh, sickle uh, red blood cells. So this is one of the methods that you can use for the uh, diagnosis of the uh, sickle cell disease by looking at the genome or the sickle cell gene of the fetus in the cells that you have isolated from the amniotic fluid. Uh, there are also other methods for the uh, diagnosis of the sickle cell anemia. Uh, one of the uh, important method is that you are going to make a biofilm and in that particular biofilm you have to look for these uh, sickle cell red blood cells. Now, what you do is that in this particular formation of the biofilm, what you do is that you are going to take the uh, sample of blood from, a, from the suspected patient and once you have taken the blood from the suspected patient, you have to uh, uh, make a biofilm in 2% uh, sodium metabisulfite. Now, what this uh, met sodium metabisulfite do is that it's actually a chemical that reduces the amount of the oxygen uh, in the red blood cells. And it is uh, an established fact that when there is a reduced amount of oxygen, these uh, abnormal red blood cells or these uh, sickle cell, uh, they are going to assume this sickle uh, shape because of the mutation at position number six. So when uh, the uh, sodium metabisulfide is going to reduce the amount of the oxygen, the normal red blood cells are going to uh, retain their shape while the uh, sickle cells they are going to assume this particular shape and you can actually diagnose a patient with the help of the uh, sodium metabisulfide by making uh, a biofilm of the red blood cells. Uh, another method for the diagnosis of the sickle cell anemia 
that is the sickle solubility test and what you do is that in the sickle solubility test you are going to take the blood sample uh, from the suspected patient you are going to mix that particular uh, blood with the sodium uh, dithionite and uh, what what it what this sodium dithionite do is that is the uh, abnormal uh, hemoglobin or the hvs that actually is not soluble in the sodium dithionite so it is going to give you a turbid solution while the normal hemoglobin they are very soluble in the sodium dithionite so it is going to give you a clear solution so if the solution is clear that means that that particular uh, person is normal he or she is not a patient of the sickle cell anemia but after treating the uh, blood samples uh, with this particular chemical if you are going to get a, a turbid one so that turbid one means that you have got the uh, abnormal hemoglobin you have got these uh, sickle sheep red blood cells and as they are not soluble in this particular uh, chemical so they are going to give you a turbid appearance the most uh, important uh, diagnostic method for the sickle cell anemia that is the hemoglobin electrophoresis uh, and uh, once you have uh, diagnosed a patient with the help of the sickle solubility test so for confirmation of this particular test you are going to uh, perform the hemoglobin electrophoresis uh, and uh, this electrophoresis is actually a technique in which you are going to uh, separate the components from each other based on charges because this is uh, electro electro actually mean charges and phoresis mean uh, that you are actually moving this charged particle through a porous material so this whole process is known as the electrophoresis as you are performing this electrophoresis for the uh, hemoglobin therefore this whole technique is known as the hemoglobin electrophoresis now what you do is that once you have uh, taken the uh, sample uh, from uh, suspected patients so there can be a variety of the conditions for example uh, if a person is normal that means that both of the beta globin genes they are normal so what you do is that you are going to introduce your sample over here so these are the wells uh, this origin is actually going to show uh, this these are the wells where you are going to introduce your sample so if the patient is normal uh, so if the person is normal not the patient if the person is normal and once you have introduced his uh, blood sample over here as you know that at position number six in the normal beta globin gene there is glutamic acid the glutamic acid is negatively charged and as this particular pole is also negatively charged so the uh, uh, normal hemoglobin or the normal uh, beta globin chain that is going to move toward the uh, positive pole because the glutamic acid is having a negative charge so in the normal condition you are going to get a band at this particular position because both of the beta globin chains they are normal when you talk about the sickle cell anemia uh, when, when there is a patient of the sickle cell anemia as you know that the glutamic acid is actually replaced by the valine and the valine is actually uh, you can see uh, not uh, it is not carrying that much negative charge as the glutamic acid is carrying so this means that the band for the uh, beta globin chain uh, where there is mutation where the glutamic acid has been replaced by the valine so it is not going to move farther towards the uh, positive charge so you are going to get banned at this particular position when you talk about the sickle cell trait or the carriers for the sickle cell anemia so they are going to have a normal copy of the beta globin chain and they are going to have an abnormal copy of the beta globin chain so what you do is that you are going to expect two kinds of the band one of the band is here and that is showing the beta globin chain when when there is a mutation at position number six and the glutamic acid has been replaced by the valine and the normal one now uh, this particular beta globin chain it is going to move at this particular position so when you are going to get a band at this particular position that means that that particular person is sickle cell anemia patient if you are going to get only a single band at this particular position that means it is a normal one and when you are going to get at uh, two bands over here you are actually uh, getting a sickle cell treat so if you like the video please subscribe to my channel hit the like button and share it with your friends